Welcome back everyone, Energy Fabricator here. I've just returned from the scrapyard with a few bits and pieces. So I'll start with this piece here, which I picked up mainly because of these toggle switches. Uh, it's got a few 4mm banana jacks here, and a couple of screw terminal banana jacks. And on this side we've also got an RS-232 connector, another 4mm jack there, and a cable glance. So I'll open it up now. Uh, as I said, the main reason I got this was because of the toggle switches. They're worth a couple of dollars brand new in the shop, so uh, they're always good to find. Now if you open it up, it's connected by all of these wires here, so we'll trim those off. So as you can see the inside of the box was pretty clean. All we've got to do now is desolder all of these wires and remove the switches and these four four millimeter banana jacks here. Now inside the box it's fairly simple. We've got the board with the RS-232 plug attached and I've got another little board here with a little resistor network and we've also got the four millimeter banana jack screw terminals here. So we'll probably keep these jacks. I'll keep this little resistor board here and we'll just leave this circuit board with the um, RS-232 plug attached in the box and put the box back together and keep that for a future project. Well after taking this box apart I've managed to salvage five switches. I've got some single pole and some double pole double throw switches here and I've got some banana jacks, a cable gland and a bunch of 2 ohm 1% precision resistors mounted on this little circuit board here with some nylon standoffs. Now while I was there I also picked up this 24 volt DC solenoid operated valve. You can never have too many of these so and this one's pretty heavy duty so I thought I'd take this one home with me and just throw it in the box with the rest of them and I also made some time to go back to the chemical analyzer which I did a tear down on last time I was at the scrapyard and I managed to pull off some more bits and pieces from that piece of equipment. I got another little 24 volt solenoid operated valve here and that'll go in the box with all the other ones like this big one here as well and I also managed to pull off this pneumatic cylinder with a 200 millimeter long stroke uh, it's air operated in both directions and it's in fairly good working condition. We've already got a clevis assembly attached on the end here. So again, that'll go in the box of pneumatic cylinders. Now off the same piece of equipment, that chemical analyzer, I managed to score these two gauges here, which I didn't even see the last time I was there because I was rushing through the tear down really quickly because it was starting to rain. But these are two Ashcroft vacuum gauges which will take us down to 30 inches of mercury. They're panel mounted and just a barbed hose terminal on the back there. Very good quality gauges in perfect condition so um, they will definitely get used in some vacuum experiments later on down the track. Now the last thing I salvaged from the chemical analyzer were these three switches here. They're all push button switches rated at 250 volts at 2 amps so enough to drive a contactor coil or any other low powered device. I also managed to find a couple of bug zappers down at the scrapyard so I salvaged the transformers out of those. You can never have too many of these. I like to have a good 5 or 10 on hand because I use them as sort of disposable power supplies for high voltage experiments. They work quite well. Um, obviously low power output but um, good value for money when you're getting them for free. I opened up a junction box and I managed to find a whole bunch of these wire nuts here so I'll keep those and I also found a whole bunch of microwave ovens so I opened them up and salvaged all of the diodes. Didn't bother with the capacitors and transformers and that sort of thing because I've got more than enough of those. You can never have too many of these and they don't take up much room at all so um, this is just another bunch to add to the collection. 
Now the last thing I found was this impulse sealer and it seems to be in fairly good mechanical condition. Switching mechanism is working fine and obviously the power lead has been cut here and as you can see here this potentiometer is a bit loose so there's something going wrong in here so we'll have to take it apart and do a bit of troubleshooting and see what's wrong with it but I'm guessing it's going to be fairly simple and I've also noticed that the handle here is snapped off these handles actually just extend back a little bit but I don't think you really need that handle we can just get that on the belt sander round that off make it look like just a bit of a knob and um, use that as a handle as is. So if we can get that working again that'll be a nice piece of kit to add to the collection but um, I think we might save this for a tear down and repair video. So until we do that, till next time, thanks for watching, please subscribe and leave some comments.